Walk through a medieval barn, bridge, or church roof, and you will often see original timbers still doing structural work after five hundred years or more. This survival was not accidental, and it was not achieved through luck, superstition, or secrecy. Medieval builders possessed a powerful anti-rot weapon that modern construction almost completely ignores. It wasn't a substance you could buy in a barrel, and it wasn't a single technique applied at the end of a build. It was a deliberate manipulation of wood chemistry that began before the tree was cut and continued throughout the life of the structure. Once you understand this weapon, it becomes clear why modern wood fails so quickly despite advanced treatments. The real enemy of wood rot was food, not moisture. Modern thinking treats water as the primary cause of rot, but medieval builders understood something more fundamental. Rot organisms need food before they need moisture. Fungi and bacteria feed on sugars, starches and proteins inside the wood. Medieval builders focused on removing or neutralizing those nutrients long before worrying about surface protection. This insight shaped everything they did. Trees were selected carefully, often older and slower grown, because dense heartwood contained fewer nutrients than fast-grown sapwood. Soft, nutrient-rich outer layers were avoided or removed. In many cases, only the heartwood was used for structural elements, even if it meant wasting material. You can apply this today by choosing heartwood-heavy lumber, trimming away sapwood when possible, and, you know, avoiding fast-grown boards for long-term projects. One of the most overlooked medieval practices was seasonal cutting. Trees were felled in late autumn or winter, when sap levels were lowest. This dramatically reduced sugar content in the wood. Without sugars, fungi struggle to establish themselves even in damp conditions. This practice was so effective that winter-cut timber consistently outperformed summer-cut wood in longevity. Modern forestry abandoned this practice for efficiency, not because it stopped working. If you harvest your own wood, or, you know, source logs locally, cutting during dormancy is honestly one of the most powerful anti-rot steps you can take. Water leaching was, in fact, a chemical weapon disguised as storage. Medieval builders often submerged timber in rivers, ponds, or bogs. This was not just accidental storage. Water immersion leached out remaining sugars and starches while leaving structural fibers intact. Cold water, you see, slowed bacterial activity while flushing nutrients from the wood. Now, this process, you see, fundamentally altered the chemistry of the wood, leaving behind material that decay organisms. Well, they just found it rather difficult to digest. The thing is, the longer the soak, the more effective the treatment becomes. Though, honestly, even just a few months made a measurable difference. For modern application, soaking posts or beams in water before drying can, you know, significantly improve resistance to rot, especially when it comes to ground contact use. After leaching, timber was dried slowly, often over many years. Slow drying allowed the wood cell walls to, well, collapse inward without cracking, which increased both its density and hardness.
This process made the wood physically harder for fungi to penetrate, you know. Modern kiln drying removes moisture quickly, but it leaves behind stressed, brittle wood that unfortunately reabsorbs water quite easily later on. Medieval drying created wood that resisted both moisture and biological attack. Air drying lumber today remains one of the most effective ways to increase longevity for outdoor and structural projects. Another powerful but rarely discussed medieval technique was heat treatment. Wood was exposed to controlled heat from fire or smoke, not to burn it, but to alter its chemistry. Heat reduced hemicellulose content, which is, you know, one of the most decay-prone components of wood, while also sealing surface pores. This process hardened the wood, reduced moisture absorption, and created an environment, well, quite hostile to fungi and insects. Unlike modern pressure treatments, heat did not introduce foreign chemicals that could leach out or, frankly, fail over time. Light surface charring followed by brushing and oiling is a practical modern adaptation of this medieval technique. Once nutrients were reduced and structure hardened, medieval builders applied oils, fats, tar or waxes. These substances did not serve as primary protection but as a final barrier that slowed moisture movement and discouraged insects. Because the wood underneath was already resistant, these treatments lasted longer and worked better. These days, modern builders often reverse this order, you know, depending on surface coatings to protect untreated wood. But medieval builders, well, they tackled the problem right at its source instead. The medieval anti-rot weapon, it wasn't just a one-time fix. Structures were uh, maintained, re-oiled, retarred, and repaired early on. And, you see, this approach prevented small problems from ever becoming structural failures. You know, this approach can still be used today. Regular inspection, simple retreatment, and early repairs really do extend wood life far beyond what modern materials promise. This weapon disappeared because it required time, patience, and understanding. Industrialization replaced wisdom with speed. The result was convenience at the cost of durability. For survivalists, homesteaders, and serious students of history, this knowledge is more relevant now than ever. It offers a way to build with local materials that last without dependence on industrial chemicals. If this deep dive helped you understand medieval building in a new way, subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this with fellow history enthusiasts and help keep serious historical knowledge alive for future generations.